Good morning, everybody. Apologies for being late here. If you give me just a moment. I'm hanging up a new co-creation here. A giant fruit of life. All right. Good morning. Thank you for your patience. So this fruit of life we just made um, out of the regeneration rings. And instead of the regular fruit of life that has 89 rings within its entire structure, its entire matrix, We've been making the Fruit of Life, which is an expanded version, which has the 127 rings. But this particular model here, I don't know how many rings it has in it. It's another expansion beyond the 127 rings. So all the way across for your center rings, which these make up that, um, that hexagonal structure that has the, the Metatron's cube in it. Basically, the flower of life usually has the, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings all together. And then we've expanded that out um, three times beyond, I guess, the actual flower of life. Anyway, sorry for being late here, guys. And we'll get going here for our part three of our 50 questions and answers. And um, also, too, if if anybody is in the other time zones, I know we had somebody coming in from Italy and it's like 5.30 p.m. there. Um, we have friends all over the world. So if anybody has a different time zone that they would like to suggest, um, we're, we're open for suggestions on that. So anyway, and then too, if you have any other questions and you're not able to make a webinar, please do um, email the questions back to that info at twistedsage.com email. And let's see, we'll start today with um, some questions and answers from the, the website from some people who weren't able to make it. Um, let's see, let's pull up some of those questions right now. So one of the questions um, from Guido was about the golden fire coil. So the golden fire coil, um, they had wore the coil for about four months now. And in the beginning, they really felt it strong. And that's the way with these coils too. For these guys, they're still so buzzy, I can hardly hold on to the copper golden fire coils. Now with the golden fire coil, just like any of our tools, when you first get it and you feel it and you can feel that energy, um, you know, if you're not sensitive, a lot of people still feel the energy, but as we become attuned to the energy of these different tools, we are more on that same plane together. So we don't feel them as much unless you're ultra sensitive we don't feel those tools as much because we have gotten to that same plane. Um, so the question um, that was asked is if these ever lose their energetics at all. And with any of the tensor rings, these tensor rings, will they never lose any of the energetics. They never need cleaned or cleared or anything because they are a superconductor as long as the ends stay welded together and that weld never breaks, um, they're always a functioning tensor ring. And um, as long as the welds hold, the energetics do not change unless we change their energetics at the, at the source, at the templates where, where they um, bring through all the different frequencies and properties. So we upgrade the tools from time to time. And so that is the only time that you'll ever actually see a change 
in the tool is when the tool itself is upgraded. Um, the other part of the question. Um, okay, so the other part of the question was keeping away negative energies. So all the tools that we create are going to be working with with you, your your higher consciousness, your soul, your higher self, however you see and say that. So it is that bigger you that is in charge of whatever occurs within these fields. Now, for most people, they can wear the coil and or any of the golden fire tools and never see a ghost or a wayward or uh, you know a negative conscious energy because it's automatically clearing them. But if it is something that is on your path, um, that's one way that you can still be receiving these negative conscious energies into your field is that one, it could be on your path that you need to learn to work with these beings um, as in clearing, activating, ascending them, connecting them, that's what I mean, connecting them to their higher consciousness. And then they shift out of that, that perception that they're at once they connect to their higher consciousness. So that's one of the reasons that you might still be seeing these. Um, another reason is occasionally, yes, we do run into these higher conscious, um, conscious energies that the tools do not affect because there's so many different levels and layers of frequencies, dimensions, all of that out there. The tools that we create are working on almost all of those. Every once in a while, you get something that is not affected by these tools in those other planes, levels, and layers. So that's where we do the consciousness work. So um, for uh, Guido, who asked that question, um, yeah, please feel free to connect um, by email, and we'll see what we can do to, to help you, you know, move along to be able to clear those. All right, so another question. And hi, everybody. Everybody's saying hello this morning. Thank you, guys. It's really good to see you guys here. Um, appreciate that you're here because, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing this for, for everybody to be live and to, to ask questions. So thank you for being here. Um, so the other email question I had was from Susie. Um, has the mini golden fire and light wand and an infinite heart pendant? wear them both every day. What would be another beneficial tool to complement these? Um, well, and, and usually for like tool readings, I'm always happy to do to do tool readings for people. Um, you know, anymore, the infinite light pendant is the most phenomenal pendant really for just about every person. There's very few people anymore that really test super strong for the coil, um, you know, because this is going to exceed what this is doing, yet this is still a phenomenal tool. Don't get me wrong. That's why we still sell these. So when you look at the tools and you want to purchase one, look at the actual tool itself and feel into which one you are drawn more to, not by the name, not by the description but just the actual photo of the tool because the energetics come through. And when you go into the heart space, you can easily connect with those. How do you go in the heart space? Well, usually we begin every one of our webinars with that. So let's do that right now. So to go in the sacred space, the heart is simply moving our consciousness from our mind back into the physical heart where we begin. So it's just putting your attention to your physical heart, to where your light is. And from there, we draw in a breath. We take a breath from the heart of the earth, from that unconditional love and energy of the earth, the consciousness of earth. So we take in that deep breath from earth up into our heart, just bringing that light of the earth, mixing that with the light of us within the heart. Next, we connect to source, soul, creator, God, central sun, however you see and say that higher power, that higher light, that creation energy. 
we take that breath in and draw that light into the heart. And the third breath in this Trinity breath is breathing in both earth and sky, bringing both energies into the heart and expanding them back out. So you are a column of light that is grounded with the earth that is connected to all creation and you are in the heart. And from there, that's where we do all of our work. That's where we expand. That's where we make choices. That's where we look for the tools that resonate the most with us. Um, so anyway, for what most people that I see anymore, um, you know, for a pendant, it's the infinite light pendant. We did make a copper version, which is called the regenerative heart pendant. So the regenerative heart pendant is a very economical way, um, to be able to step into these higher frequencies. Now, again, the coil is a fantastic piece, but, um, it's just not as expansive. It's protective. It's comfortable. The coil is protective and comfortable. The rest of these tools are more expansive to where it takes you out of that space to where you even need to have the comfort the protection. Um, if that makes sense there. All right. And just looking through here. Yeah. It's nice to see all you guys. <laughs> Hi, Susan. All right, so we're going to questions here, and I'll just start at the top. Um, well, actually, I'll start at the oldest and go up to the top. What's the top choices you've made that increase the quality of life? Dumping the garbage, not looking at outside things. I used to read a book. I used to do everything every day. Um, I used to just fill myself full of knowledge and information and I don't look outside into the world anymore. So one of the things that I've done to increase the quality of life is to not watch the news, not look at social media stuff, not read all the funny videos that people send me about 5G and the reptilians and everything else in the world because not that I am ignorant to those. It's just that we help to create realities by where we focus our energy on. And so trying to stay focused on those things from the heart is really what increases your quality of life because we can look at all disparities throughout all of the universes and see disparities wherever we look and help feed and create those realities. So once we are able to, so what I'm saying about that, it's not ignoring things. It is about being able to stand within yourself and your light enough, strongly enough, so that when you do look at those disparities, you are transforming them. They are not changing you. Um, so really one of the things is where you focus your attention to, which helps change the quality of life for me. And that is something that my sister Brenda taught me early on is discernment. What it is that you look at in the world, if it takes you out of your heart space, if it makes you feel icky, then don't put your attention there. And again, it's not ignoring the things. It is being able to stand within your light so you begin to transform those things that do come into your awareness. A question from Donald. Your tensors can structure water. Have you ever, edu have you ever educated your structured water via Anchi stones? Yeah, actually, um, where do we have one here? We have the water coasters. Uh, Sorry, I know I've got a water coaster here somewhere. I've been trying to keep all the tools here. Um, we actually put Anchi stones in the water coasters. There's one right there, that little crystal. We put three larger side, well, three larger flex of Anchi crystals within the um, the Hedica coasters as well. Um, you know, and the Anchi's you know, they, they feel very similar to me as to the purple lapidolite that we get from our buddy, Randy Hatton, who has vibrant, vital water. He does the Gaia fountains and such, and he lives down in, uh, Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico. And, um, he's, you know, he's been supplying me with this purple lapidolite, which is, feels very similar to the Yanchi crystals. So we also put that so the rest of the flex that are in here, um, the mica and such are that purple lapidolite. And so 
And then plus with the coasters, we have shungite, powdered shungite in this plant-based resin. Um, so yeah, we, we do use the, the Anchi crystals with, with the water charging as well. Um, and then a question, Ethan. Hey, Ethan, how's it going? Um, how about putting a harmony generator inside the home harmonic creation field trio? So with the, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. The harmony generators, um, these guys right here, the harmony generators, whether this size or the larger size, these guys are basically creating a field of influence. You know, the smaller ones about five and a half to six miles, the larger ones about 12 miles. So whatever you put inside of there, piece of rose quartz, this generator will then transmit that out into that whole field. Now, when you start stepping into the gateway pen that has the harmonic creation field trio in it, that's, that's this, the home set is just a larger set of rings. When we use those together, if you can feel that, so that is doing a transmission, but because of the harmony field, the harmony field does not hold the fields of like the golden fire and the regeneration. That's why we've had to end up making the newer rings, the golden fire, the regeneration, because um, we could not fit all those frequencies and properties, those larger fields into the harmony field. So the harmony field has a certain bandwidth where the golden fire has a different bandwidth and the regeneration has a whole different bandwidth as well. And so the harmony can still send out as many of the frequencies and properties as it can within its own bandwidth, if that makes sense. It's still going to um, amplify your harmony generator for sure, but you're not going to be able to send out that entire harmonic creation field with the harmony generator, if that makes sense. And again, please do uh, re-ask questions if we need to along the way. Uh, let's see, another question here. Uh, good morning, Sinan. Does the thickness of copper change energy? Can the one-tenth major be used when making an intense ring for any frequency? Um, so the first question there about the, the gauge of copper, um, let me pull up. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have all of the rings that we create here. So um, somebody asked me to show one of the rings every time we talk about it. So I'm getting a, a kind of a mess of different tools, but not all the rings. So let's say these two here, for instance, um, these are both different frequencies, golden fire and regeneration, but let's say they are the same frequency with these two different thickness of gauges. Now, no matter the thickness of the gauge, it is still producing the same tensor field. So the same frequencies, properties, energies are found within either one of the rings. To me, you can feel it more on the physical when it is a heavier gauge. And that's why we make our practitioner rings, our great big rings, we make those out of that really thick, heavy gauge, you know, the size of the pinky. Because the, the larger practitioner rings that you run over a person or that you stand in as you sit them on the floor, those ones, the body feels more, um, even though it's the same exact field as a light gauge. Um, and then the second half of that question, can a one-tenth measure be used when making a tensor ring for any frequency? No. Um, every cubit measure that you make, and we should probably have a webinar one of these days uh, for those who are making the tools, because um, that's a whole different subject and rabbit hole right there. But um, no, when we, on our sacredmeasures.com website, it gives the specific measurements for a lot of the, tool, the the cubit measures that we use, and it breaks those down into different fractions. So basically what we were talking about is that this is a golden fire ring. This is a golden fire ring. And this is a golden fire ring. These are just different fractions of the base cubit. So they're just different fractals, all the same power and potency. Um, they just create a different size column of energy. 
Uh, next question from Diane. What would happen if a one and a half inch regeneration tensor field generator was used instead of a three inch Gaia sphere on the small pyramid? Diane, I saw this question come up someplace. I apologize. I didn't catch it again to answer that. So the question is if you can use something besides the three and a half inch Gaia sphere for the pyramids. No, you cannot. Um, basically the the tensor field generator and the regeneration just does not flow the energy in the same way that the tensor field generators are simply like a sun. They shine out. When we create the Gaia spheres with the six rings instead of the four rings of the generators, the generators have the four rings. When we make the Gaia spheres with the six rings, they move the energy differently. So the regeneration Gaia sphere the reason that we use it on the pyramid is because this is one of the powerhouses that is grounding that light in with the core of the earth and expanding it through the earth. So this really is an important piece for that pyramid. Um, and Diane, thank you very much for coming on and asking that question. And thank you for your patience that I did not, was not able to respond. Um, Chris, yeah. Our, our friend Chris, who's on, this is the, the newly created creation for him. We usually don't take um, any kind of custom orders, but uh, Chris is a pretty special being, and plus he has one of our um, ascension chambers out in the East Coast, and so this is going to go on to his travel ascension chamber, which excited for that, Chris. This is really going to amp things up. Um, another question, question about 5G tools. What is the best 5G protection? My friends want to know how you know it works. Certainly. Um, so any of the golden fire tools are perfect for the 5G, 5G transformation. So we have the golden fire generators. Those are actually on sale right now and they're going to stay on sale indefinitely until everything shifts differently in this world, which these may stay on sale indefinitely um, because, you know, to us, it's a service to get these out there because these will affect about a two mile area. So not only is it working with, um, you know, your 3G, 4G, 5G, basic cell phone, cell transmissions, your Wi-Fi, um, but it is also working with that 5G millimeter wave and the effects of it. So there's so much scare about 5g um part of the issue of 5g is the millimeter wave transmitters and that's what everybody's like well that's so that's a lethal weapon all that stuff well yeah millimeter waves are they're they're not cool but they're very limited um 5g millimeter waves only travel 200 feet they don't go through a piece of cardboard they don't go through your windows or your walls um the 5G millimeter wave, and it's a straight line. So if you stand to the side, you're not getting hit by it. So if you have a 5G telephone, because I went downtown Chicago last summer, did a study. If you have a 5G telephone and you're standing right in a line with that, then you get all these bars and you can feel it. But when you step to the side, you no longer feel it. I could no longer see that line of energy hitting me. And then plus your phone doesn't have service. So, I mean, it's really a strange thing that they're even working with the millimeter waves. And I don't, it's a very limited, limited technology, the millimeter wave of 5G. But the other 5G, so that is simply the fifth generation of Wi-Fi transmission or of cell phone transmissions. Um, everybody's up in arms because this is 60 hertz. Well, our household electric in all the United States produces a 60 hertz field. That is why that interferes with the oscillation of the electromagnetics of our heart our heart's an electromagnetic generator. Electromagnetics on this planet and in this entire physical universe are a part of all physical structure. We need electromagnetics. Uh, we need geomagnetics. It is all part of, of everything in the physical and beyond. So electromagnetic fields are inherently neither good nor bad. Again, our heart's a huge electromagnetic generator. But as certain frequencies that come through on those electromagnetic fields, such as the 60 hertz from our household electric in the US, the UK uses a different hertz. They use like a 45 or something like that. And so it doesn't interfere with the electromagnetics of the heart as much. So really, again, there's so much fear with this 5G stuff. But um, 
any of the golden fire tools, especially those golden fire generators, is going to clear that whole area. You wear any pendant that has the golden fire on it, and it will clear it. And how do we know this is so? Um, when they first turned on the, the 5G towers, and I've told the story a few times, but when they first turned on the, the 5G, it was actually in the Super Bowl in Minneapolis during the 2018 Super Bowl. So right after that, um, because they were doing that initial 5G rollout through the Minneapolis area, so we had a gal from Minnesota who called us, said, hey, I have your golden fire generator, but I'm still getting bombarded all of a sudden. It's just something's not right. So when I looked in, I could see that it was connected into their electrical system and it was just pumping through her electrical. So when I looked outside of her home, I found like three little spots that that was projecting in that energy, that same that was being pumped out the electrical grid. So if you are downtown in an area where they're actually having the 5G millimeter wave transmitters and they hit your electrical lines, that will flow through your electrical line for, we don't know, not very far, not over a block. So if you live right downtown, downtown, we suggest getting a plug-in device because that will then transform the electrical that comes through. Um, so anyway, back to the story. How do we know that um, these are being effective? Well, because we could see that at that time before these were upgraded, that this was not clearing that 5G that was coming through the household electric um, or those little tiny towers that were, or transmitters that were right outside of her home. So I anchored columns of light. The columns of light that we anchor are using the golden light wand and also using the sacred heart, the golden fire of the heart. That in itself is that golden fire um, the Sacred Heart is that high enough field that will transform those frequencies within its field. And so with that golden fire field then, um, well, with those columns of light that were the golden fire and the golden light, that cleared everything, that transformed everything. So Brenda and I went and put that anchor of light with that golden fire, with that golden light, into the etheric templates, the higher dimensional versions of these tools. And again, whenever we do those upgrades like that, add in the upgrade to clear the 5G millimeter wave, that then reflects into all tools ever created. So then after that, we could take a golden fire generator and you would clear it, you would clear those waves. So how do we know it is because we can see, we can feel, it's the knowing, um, you know, and like I say, when I did the studies in downtown Chicago, you know, I can just, I could see the energy. I could feel it. I could tell the quality of the energy, um, that, and the only other reason that we can really see what the tools are doing is through, um, experiential, not only for myself, but if you look at the website, we have like over 800 positive testimonials of people who have experiences of transforming energy of of just all the all different things that happen but it's not just us who are noting these effects it is others who are sensitive or who can see or have the understanding of 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 energy of subtle energy and they can tell too that the golden fire whether it is anchoring a column of light or any of the golden fire tools are going to be clearing the effects of, of that 5G because the tensor fields, um, there's no scientifically quantitative way that you can tell what those fields are doing. You can do GDV photo imaging to show that when you put a magnet inside of a tensor ring that it negates the magnetic fields, but it doesn't really tell you anything else. Um, we, can, we can have a cell phone tab on a cell phone and you can use an emf reader and it'll still read the same emfs and actually it'll read it farther out because it is bringing a coherency to that electromagnetic field again electromagnetic fields are not inherently negative um, so our tensor tools are transforming that field so the only way that you can tell scientifically that this is working is through biofeedback what it is that your body is saying for somebody who has a, a, um, a scientific instrument connected to you, like GDV, 
or else you can just do the biofeedback on your own, muscle testing, kinesiology, all of that. Um, so science hasn't been able to tell. If we put crystals in a generator, does the crystalline energy dissipate as much as the effects of the tensor generator? For example, the golden fire nearly two miles. Um, a harmony generator, and we take a piece of quartz crystal and we put it inside of there. The energy, let me rephrase that, the consciousness of this crystal can access that field in this entire five and a half to six mile area. The frequencies and properties of the crystal, as well as the consciousness, also flood this five and a half to six mile area but they don't extend any farther. Um, crystals and tensor rings together, they both amplify each other. So you have the crystal that will amplify the properties of the ring. You have the ring that will amplify the properties of the crystal. So they also amplify each other. Plus it cleans and clears the crystals. Crystals and tensor fields are very good friends. Um, What's the difference with the new silver infinity heart pendant compared to copper? Are you planning on making these tools out of gold? So the difference between the silver and the copper, um, let's take the infinity, the copper infinity, golden fire and the silver infinity within here, also golden fire. Those two side by side are exactly the same energetic. So golden fire rings and copper or silver are exactly the same energetics. Excuse me. With the regeneration ring though, this little one and a half inch regeneration ring out of copper, when we first made it out of silver, wow, the difference in the regeneration tools when they're made in silver. That's why I wear the silver silver um, cuffs too, because it is, uh, well, it's a crisper, cleaner, clearer, higher energy than the copper the regeneration only when it's made out of silver. It's just cleaner, clearer, crisper. When these first came along, the so this this pendant here, and I started wearing it, and I was wearing everything else. I was wearing a little three inch Taurus. I was wearing all of my all of my jewelry stuff. Um and I was wearing it for about a day and a half and then, you know, I put it all on at the same time. And then Brenda's like, hey, you should take take some of that off once and see i took every all of my copper off and i was just wearing this holy smokes did i skyrocket even with all of the stuff that i was wearing and i took all that off and i had this only holy smokes i skyrocketed um amazing so anymore i just wear all the silver stuff but again I'm not dissing on the copper. The copper is phenomenal in all these pieces. So when you're wearing these two here, the reason that I suggest, most of the time that I, when I'm suggesting tools, I am looking at the price tag because not everybody wants to invest $144 into a solid silver piece. That's why we created the $56 alternative. Now the difference between the two if you have never put on a tensor ring or you've never used either one of these, this is going to be so flipping phenomenal. It'll blow you away. But again, this just takes you, it's, it's more, it's, it's more, but again, I'm not going to negate this one as this is a phenomenal piece, the regenerative heart. But anyway, so yeah, so for most people, I'm suggesting the regenerative heart because it is 56 bucks. And I'd rather not, you know, suggest to somebody who can afford $144 silver piece. Um, but the options are there. Again, so many people talk about going into the heart space, looking at the tools, being intuitively guided, being like, no, I can't afford to buy that activator, but man, I have to. And so it's, it's just listening to, to your heart, um, to that inner voice when you're in the heart space, not the inner voice when you're here. Um, 
Susanna, hi, could you do a meditation at the end of this talk? <laughs> yeah, we'll do a meditation at the end here. Um, we'll here in about 20 minutes, we'll, we'll start on that meditation or sooner. Um, and then Samson's asking, how did you feel when you first put on the silver Taurus pendant? Well, the silver Taurus pendant, we actually made several different varieties of these. We made them all with, um, one side of these has a golden fire, um, seed of life. The other side has the regeneration seed of life. So we played around with these both sides regeneration. It just wasn't it. We played both sides golden fire and then we did one on each side. Um, so I can't really say Samson when I first put on this pendant, how it felt because it was a process to get to this one. And, and this whole time too, we just felt like there wasn't something you know, because if you look on the web page for the Silver Taurus pendant, it says that we've been still working on, you know, creating a whole different one, that this has been a prototype. I think we're going to stick with this one for a while because um, at the time when we first created Samson, we were, I was seeing where the silver ring connected and just the silver ring where it connects, it's bringing, it's in this really high place and it's just bringing through this beam of light. The Taurus pendant in the beginning, instead of bringing through a beam, um, it made more of a of a fractal out of of like this Taurus fractal. It you know like a giant fruit. So take two fruits together and ratchet them just like the seed of life, and it makes this fractal out. And so that's what I see these guys are doing is that they're creating not a beam of light that just comes in and is clean and clear. These are creating more of a, of a larger space. So to me, the infinite light pendant is, is almost a better one for most people because it's fast. It, it's, it's pinpoint. It's, it's clear. It's connecting. Where the Taurus pendant to me, it's more like it's holding this field, but it's a broader field that just takes more time, but over time, this guy is going to be a lot more phenomenal than this, I feel, because over time, and I'm talking, you know, the course of whatever your path is, that it's going to help you be more expansive. I don't know. That's just my, my impressions, but this is still the one that I recommend to most every person. Can I add an infinity heart to the Taurus pendant? What effect would that have? Yeah, Marla, actually... Most of the time I have a silver infinity that connects right here and it's not changing the, the flow and energetics that much of the pendant, but it is just adding in that extra. This in itself already is very much a heart It's connecting into the heart. This Taurus pendant is very heart connecting. This is too, but yeah, so you don't really need to add a silver infinity to me. It would be more, for decoration, for aesthetics. Um, is it necessary to, necessary to put the crystals in the golden fire generator in the province to clean the crystals or does the generator automatically clean every crystal in the house? So when you have the golden fire generator and you have the crystals, um, the generators are a lot different than just a ring. A ring is very much a concentrated field right within there. So if you're using a ring and you put the crystal right inside the ring, it, it clears the energetically like right then and there. But for a generator, here's there, the golden fire. So for the golden fire generators, this field that comes out here, it's not as concentrated. Um, it's just a, a, a field and not that little column of light. So if you have a crystal and you can set the generator on top of the crystal or in the crystal, it will work much faster. Okay. So no, I'm going down the wrong track with this because the very first one you ask the question is, um, the, the short and simple answer is intention intention of not only this generator clearing the crystals but also connecting with the crystals and just having that intention that the crystals are connecting into this field 
so that everybody's aware, everybody's clean and clear. That's the short, simple answer is your uh, intention is Sith generator, your crystals all within two miles. You visualize that from within the heart and it's done. Simple as that. So, but it just takes your attention and intention to clear all those within the field of the generator. Yeah, that feels right. Um, could you talk about the key pendant? I noticed it has the same symbol as the wings atop. Which tool is better to carry with you to a funeral or traveling somewhere with low energy? Okay, so the wings of talk. And the key pendant. So the very first one of these was the starburst, which is this pattern right here. They have um, four legs in one cubit measure and four tines in another cubit measure. So these are, aren't all the same measure. There's two different measurements here. So the starburst that we originally created, which were from uh, Bill Reed creation, who was one of the original people at Slim Sperling, they were a larger starburst and they didn't have a ring around it. They were just a larger starburst design. Now that was what came first. Then when um, I had another friend who talked about, hey, maybe you should move, drop that spine down in a Fibonacci ratio. And I did, and that is when the key pendant was born. So the key pendant is actually, this spine right here is shorter and this spine right here is longer. So it basically took this and dropped it down a little bit. Now the key pendant to me, it's, um, they're both gonna be doing a lot of the similar things for clearing ghosts, waywards. When I first started wearing my key pendant, my Untok the key, the Anka the now time. When I first started wearing my key pendant, it was, um, I never saw the ghost waywards in my field after that. It just cleared them. So do these. Um, so the wings to talk. Now, one of the differences to me with um, the regular starburst and the key pendant was how I always described it was the key pendant um, is something that you don't really feel until you take it off because it is working on all these other higher levels and layers that we just don't have perception of. And it, it's, it's just, it's really an amazing tool that key pendant. Um, and it's, it's, different than any of these other tools. Um, I can't tell you qualitatively how they're different, but they are, they're working differently. Um, still in those higher realms that we just, you know, we're just not perceiving what exactly is going on. But for the key pendant and the wings of talk, if you're gonna compare those two, I would go with the wings of talk. Now the key pendant is a pretty phenomenal piece to wear. I mean, it's a beautiful piece. Um, I, it, I, I like wearing it. It's just a beautiful piece. But the Wings of Talk, to me, is a lot more powerful and potent than the key pendant. Um, the Wings of Talk is kind of the predecessor to that silver ring. Um, they're, they're bringing through a lot of the same energies. Um, so the Wings of Talk is just a lot more powerful and potent for carrying with you. So my daughter, instead of putting the, the little generator in her backpack, the little two inch one um, for school, I started putting the Wings of Talk in her backpack. It's just, it's a lot more clearing. Um, so yeah, you can actually use the Wings of Talk over a golden fire generator instead of a golden fire generator. The Wings of Talk is really a powerful one. Not only one to sit it and forget it, but also one to actively do the work with for anchoring those columns of light. Because the columns of light that you anchor with the Wings of Talk are different than the golden fire and light columns. This has the golden fire and light column, but it has a lot more to it. Um, so yeah, it's a powerful tool. So any of you guys that are interested, watch the webinar because it gives you the attunement to this tool so you don't need to buy the physical one. So um, like you, Ethan, um, who uses the wands all the time, you might find that watching the Wings of Talk webinar, you can start working with this tool um, and doing some pretty phenomenal things with it. Let's see, what's the radius and range of the shaman's wand? So the shaman's wand basically, um, 
I carrying I have the original that I always carry on my belt loop. So it's about this big. Not very big. Small radius, small field that they create. I carry mine within my field because then any tool that you carry within your field bolsters your field. Um, but so that's just just the innate range of it. So now then, because it's it's different than the coil pendant, even though you know at first sight you're like, hey, they're both coils and they both have an affinity. This one's creating the torus, the the the, the toroidal field. This one, it's just creating like this caterpillar looking fuzzy energy field around it. But you can use this to do distance work. So um, we just got a testimony on our website again from Ethan. He talked about using the shaman's wand. So when you go to the shaman's wand page, you'll see the testimonials and you'll read Ethan's. And basically, he just created this field that he intended that the person that he was working with at a distance or the organ or whatever it is that you're working with at a distance, you're intending that it's just right there. And you're just using your left palm just to hold space. And so you're creating this field around what it is that you're working with. Um, so Diane's asking this. So Diane, um, what should we work on for you? Let's just have you, let's put you inside of this bubble. So right now I'm just putting you inside of this bubble of the shaman's wand. And just creating that bubble around you right here, right now, or right there, right now, distance. Quantum tools used at a distance. And again, when we work with other people, when we work with these tools and these fields, they are working with the soul first and foremost. So it's not like the old time where we always had to go and ask permission from the person. We basically, when we do the work from the heart space, it is, and with these tools, it is working with the soul. And then the soul is the one who says, okay, yep, we'll receive this. We'll let this come through and we'll, you know, and we'll hold space for this to happen. Otherwise, um, you know, that's a beautiful thing working from the heart space and with these tools is that you can never do any wrong or any harm um, when you work with anybody at a distance. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Where's the best place to put the wings of talk in the small pyramid? So it doesn't matter where in the pyramid you put the wings of talk. Um, and again, this is a prototype. So obviously this isn't the, the mini pyramid, but this is, I simply put it at the top. It just does not. And, and in the other pyramid, um, for me, usually in the mini pyramid, I'll just put it down underneath the torus. But it really does not matter with the mini pyramids. As long as all of those five components of the mini pyramid are together, you can throw them all inside of the pyramid. It's going to be doing exactly the same. It's not going to move the energy or do anything any different, no matter where you put all five components within the mini pyramid. Um, question from Gene. Whenever I, okay. I want to make the Sperling type harmonizer. Okay. So again, I think we'll, we'll um, eventually do a builders webinar and we, we don't make harmonizers on um, the Sperling harmonizer. I've never been guided to do it. I actually have one of Slim's jigs um, for making harmonizers, but I would just never been guided to make a harmonizer. Um, Whenever I see tensor cuffs, I wonder how they send out the energy without being connected by a solder joint. Can you please explain? Oh yeah, the cuffs. The cuffs are truly a ring that's folded in half and then bent around. So if you undo one of these, which will break it if you do, you could turn this back into a ring. This is just a ring bent into that shape. So tensor rings will always work no matter the shape that they're made into. Sometimes they move the energy differently like a coil. This coil is actually just a ring. The ends are bound together. The ends are, are brought, raised together, but it's the way the ring is set. It's put into a coil version. So it creates that two torus. Um, 
So these guys, again, it's just wearing anything on your personal field is how the, the cuffs are going to work, no matter if it's cuff or a pendant or a pocket piece. They're all working within your field. Again, I usually suggest having something over the heart, the heart area, because that's just where a light is, and it just helps to expand that light from the heart more. Um, if no quantum substance can stop the energy of the golden fire generator, it is constantly passing through the human body and feedback loop. So can the generator's energy affect low frequencies like parasite, bacterial infection, and clear foods in the refrigerator? Yes, uh, the tensor fields are not, you can't contain the tensor field. So it's going to go through everything. So yeah, when we have a tensor field generator sitting here, the golden fire generator, it is going through, that. that's passing through our entire physical structure. And so... Basically, um, the question is, can the gen generator's energy affect low frequencies like parasites, bacterial interference, and such? Um, yes, totally, because dense consciousness, so bacteria, virus, all of that are, are f their fields of consciousness as well as the physical structure. And so there, it is very much working with dense consciousness and, and any lower vibration dense energies it is raising that frequency and vibration and it's also causing the them to be uncomfortable to where they'll just move out they won't be able to thrive things like that um patricia asks i have a 29 inch golden fire ring how can i use it can i place it under my bed at night under my chair do you have other suggestions pat so yeah pat totally just use that golden fire ring that 29 inch ring wherever you sit you're doing it exactly right now, with your bed, though, I suggest the golden fire generator, or sorry, the golden fire ring, the 29-inch ring, the large ring, be hung on the wall right behind you. So if you have this hanging like this and you are sleeping in bed like this, you are sleeping within that column of light. If you have this under your bed, it is only affecting that part of you where this column is sitting at, if you see what I'm saying. So then it only is affecting that part of the column. But if you have the column this way, then you are sleeping within the column. So I always suggest having a little nail on your headboard or your wall and hang this ring right there so that you are sleeping directly within the column. Um, when you're sleeping within the columns of the tensor fields, that's really when they are doing so much work because we're not there contradicting it in some way unconsciously if we leave the generator in the sun won't make a positive contribution to the tensor generator so how to see that so basically i suppose it really would having the sun rays in here basically whatever input you put into the generator or whatever input you know the sun raises, they come into the field of the generator, it's gonna be doing the harmonizing, the clearing, the, the restructuring, it's gonna be doing, it's gonna interface. These, this will definitely interface with the sun's rays. Um, and, and again, the sun's rays are so multi-frequency, multi-dimensional. Um, so yeah, this will totally interface. And I don't know exactly what it'll do, but <laughs> I, yeah, it'll definitely interface. Um, question, please suggest a water ring set for a home well where groundwater was subject to heavy agriculture chemicals such that the groundwater may be safe for drinking. Well, the tensor fields will not filter water. The tensor fields will restructure water to where heavy metals will fall out or they'll dissipate out. Um, it'll also, we've seen that it'll transform fluoride in drinking water where the tests come back lower when you put this in with fluoride. Chlorine, of course, chlorine dissipates and turns into chloramines. Um, but in order to filter chemicals out of your water, you still need a filter. But the rings can assist with that filter, um, with that filtering process because it'll help to unbind those molecules to the water molecule. So if you are using a reverse osmosis filter or you're using a Berkey filter like we use, we love our Berkey filters, um, you know, have 
your water, if you can have your water um, energized with the ring beforehand, it is so much better. So like if you had a holding pressure tank and then you had the rings with your pressure tank before it went into your reverse osmosis, then it would give the water time to set within the fields to where it would restructure the water physically because it takes four to six hours for the tensor fields to restructure water physically. Energetically, it can clean and clear the water instantly. Um, but that is only an energetic cleaning and clearing. For the when you're talking about filtering, you're talking about physical properties of the water that you have to restructure. So if you restructure, or that you have to filter out. So if you restructure the water first, it will filter much easier because it's releasing those those chemical bonds. Can you compare the torus pendant to the cosmic sun disk? So the cosmic sun disk really is a powerful, powerful tool. I would almost, you know, they have the same basic properties to them where the, where the Taurus pendant and the cosmic sun disk are going to be working with your physical cells. They're going to be increasing the spin rate. They're going to be clearing dense energies out of the physical, but it's, it's more subtle the the pendant is a lot more subtle than the cosmic sun disk if you take an eight inch cosmic sun disk and you set it above your head wow it opens up it expands it brings in these higher fields you can feel it going through your body you can see it clearing out putting that higher spin rate to the physical i mean having a cosmic sun disk itself is a lot more potent than having and faster working than having the dependent again the pendant to me is more subtle broader allowing you to expand more as well as that higher connect but the sun disk it just comes in and it just it just goes through and does its work um hopefully hopefully that kind of answers the question um then denise is asking do you use any INF as a pendulum Oh yeah, totally. When I wake up in the morning, I'll ask, is this one helpful and beneficial for me to wear today? I, yeah, so I use all my pendants as a pendulum when I wake up in the morning. Some of my tools had vanished. However, I use an etheric a golden light rod now and it seems to work. Um, yeah, it's amazing now a lot of people talk about how they're tools just disappear and a lot of times they reappear um so yeah it's nice that you can use isla that's nice that you can use the golden fire and light rods the dowsing rods in order to find those things because for me i'm not a very good dowser with dowsing rods i do much better with a pendulum if i have to douse um but the dowsing rods are a lot of fun if you if you can work them um, a question. So can I place a crystal inside the mini ascension pyramid? Oh yeah, totally. So the mini ascension pyramids, you can, you can add to that however you wish. You can put it into a larger crystal grid, which is what I'm working on right now. Someday I just have all my crystals laying out, all my favorites that I finally got to get out of the boxes again. Um, or you can put a crystal right inside of it. So it's kind of like with the ascension chambers is that, um, I've never really felt drawn to mix a lot of crystals with a lot of the tools, a lot of the Ascension Chambers because, well, I mean, specifically the Ascension Chambers and the Mini Pyramid, just because I'm, you know, I'm more interested in working with that specific frequency. But if you are led to use crystals, yeah, totally put them inside the Ascension Pyramid and that can help radiate them out. Although the Ascension Pyramid to me looks like it's gonna overpower that crystal quite a bit so you might not get the same as if you just put the crystal inside of a generator to me is what it feels like so to me it just feels like it's going to be doing more overpowering of the crystal than actually broadcasting it um, at least in a larger area will the golden fire tool or material will the golden fire tool or material on us affect the copper while wearing affect the copper wire while we're twisting okay so uh, another question on twisting copper and again we'll wait and hit any um tensor tool making questions on a whole different webinar um 
because making tensor tools is it's it's a whole different rabbit hole um not everybody can make a good tensor tool and you know for me the first 50 rings i made i actually had some rings that were non-beneficial i had some rings that only worked on one side but that was because that for one i was not clean and clear and two i did not know what clean and clear meant i came from a very science background so when i started making these tools 10 years ago um you know i had no idea and i didn't know anything about energy and you know and we'll, or a 30 templates. It took us years until we figured out the 30 templates. We were just making regular rings. So um, tool making is a whole different critter that I think maybe we should have a whole different webinar for that someday. Because I don't encourage a lot of people to make tools because you have to do a lot of, a lot of work in order to make sure that you're creating a work intensive ring. Um, but there's some phenomenal tensor tool makers out there. Um, but to me, it's, I attribute everything. It's the authority templates. That's where all the true miracles and magic are in the tensor tools, because most anybody can put together a 144 ring and create a tensor field that's going to restructure water. But to do some of these other things that we're doing, I couldn't have done it on my own. It did took my sister, um, is the one who has assisted me with all this higher energy stuff. Um, but yeah. All right, moving on. Kind of random, but what does the term stalking the wild pendulum mean to you? I have no idea. Also, do you astral travel? Hmm. Like, yeah, well, astral travel. I don't know. I guess I never read any books on astral travel, but I mean, that's the work that we do is we go to other worlds. We go to, you know, yeah, yeah, I guess I do astral travel. But it, it's always a conscious thing. It's not um, at night. Well, actually, I don't know what I do at night. So I'm not sure about astral traveling. I, I need to look up the term more, I guess. Um, but it's, it is part of the work that we do because, I mean, I can go anywhere through any time right now. I mean, I can go take a look anywhere um, and feel the energies. It's not like I can pop in and see things clearly the majority of the time, but I can pop in and feel the energies and do the work. So that's just part of the, the, you know, the work that we do for the, the larger clearing work. Um, Marla, what is your recommendation between the infinity bracelet and the infinite light pendant? That's a great question, Marla. So which one? They're both going to be doing the same work. They're, they're both the exact same tool i like i prefer the one over the heart it's more expansive but this is still going to be doing the work mine's sorry mine's a little patina looking because mine's mine i got the prototypes they're made out of sterling silver instead of the fine silver which doesn't patina like this um but yeah I still would prefer the pendant over the heart versus one on the wrist. And it's just like any of the tools. Again, you can wear them in your pockets. You can wear them, you know, on your wrists, wherever, or on the chest. And they're going to be doing great things for you and your field and the connecting and the clearing and all the work. But to me, having something over the heart is just, to me, that's just more expansive. Um, so that's a tough question that you'll have to kind of sit with. And if you'd like me to take a look, I can sure take a look for you and see to what might be better. Yeah, I'm not sure, Marla. Um, we can, so we can certainly discuss that in email too, if you like. All right. So going through, okay, we're done on the questions menu. So I'm now going over here to the chat menu. And somebody's saying social media, YouTube's just too much at the moment. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, Kathy says, I use the golden fire wand to dissipate the the chemtrails in the sky through the connection of the heart connection breath. Any comments from me? Yeah, um, totally using any of the tools is a great way to work with 
anything in the outside environment. Um, you know, again, everything in reality is is creation. It's it's we are co-creators of our entire flipping reality. Um, so the reason I say that is when chemtrails first started, we did not see that there was anything going on other than somebody who saw contrails in the up in the sky and was like chemtrails. Hey, these are chemtrails and they're hurting me. Well, then he told somebody else and they're like, hey, yeah, chemtrails. And then they started to create this. And then somebody over here is like, oh, yeah, chemtrails. I got chemtrails. And then it created larger pockets of realities to where it became a reality. And that's just the way creation works, where we put our attention to and the more people put their attention to it. So a lot of these people like, QAnon, who channel and say three days of darkness. Well, it's not that they were that they were wrong or that anybody is wrong when they are channeling. It's just that when you are channeling and seeing that you might only see one timeline, one reality. And that's not maybe the larger one that we are all co-creating together. So that's really why right now is an important time with all these different timelines and realities coming together and new ones being formed uh, from underneath of us that we're about ready to converge onto is, is that we need to keep our focus, our attention onto the better things, to the betterment, to the solutions, to the everything, not the problems and why and Oh, this and this and this, because there is disparity everywhere. And we can focus on that and bring that into reality. So <laughs> sorry, we went off kind of a tangent there about um, being able to use the wand and to shift chemtrails in your area, area. Yeah, wherever I go, I don't see chemtrails. They're, they're not in my reality. And it is if within my reality to clear those things. That's just what I do. I like to clear stuff that is not in the highest and best good. And so, you know, gosh, you know, a 12 year old girl who could move clouds years ago without any tools, the tools are simply there to help us. Um, our good friend, Wynn Gardner, Organite Austin, he actually wrote a book, the new science of rain and how he did a test, a uh, study down in Austin, Texas, to where he used the tensor field generators, frequencies and other tools to actually shift weather patterns. So yes, we are definitely powerful beings and the tools just are training wheels to help us. Um, holy smokes, you guys. We better do a meditation. Sorry, I gotta cut this short. We only got a few questions left here. Um, I'll answer one more question, but then we're gonna, gonna roll on here. Um, I wear the silver infant light pendant and would like to wear bracelets. When I go back to massage, would you suggest the Hepka class, copper, silver, or both, or infinity bracelets? So, you know, if you already have the silver, the, the infinite light pendant, don't spend the money and get these guys. Just get the regular clasps because this is doing everything that this does. So, and plus the clasps for doing massage and things, they're a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, for doing massage, things like that. Um, they're a lighter gauge. They're not as bulky. These are phenomenal. I'm not down talking these. I'm just saying, don't spend the money on this if you already own this. Get the clasps. Um, copper or silver, a golden fire, doesn't matter. Regeneration, I'd suggest the silver. It's just, it, it's a cleaner energy. So yeah, I would totally wear a golden fire and a silver regeneration, a copper, golden fire, silver regeneration, just because they look good. It's just aesthetic. Um, and again, it saves you a few bucks. Um, the other one last question I'm just going to look at here real quick. Um, somebody's asking, so this is a question from Glendy. Um, with the drastically increased use of Zoom platforms, I noticed a lot of energy bleed through and negative infiltration when I host an events. I'm using many of the tools to trans transmute, transform. Do you have any recommendations of using any of these tools in the ways that harmonize the energy? Um, totally, you know, like 
the Gaia spheres are one that we always use the gold fire Gaia sphere for everybody within that field to connect. Um, the reason that I use this set of three rings on my phone is because this helps with all communications between here. Um, you can take one of the pendants, put it over your camera lens, put it on your computer. Also, just your intentions and create a column of light into your computer. So your electronics are your interface. So basically, just work with your electronics in 10, visualize them, expanding out, connecting to everybody, clearing all of those electronic connections between you and everybody and everything. Um, intentions is, is, is the huge thing. All right. So you guys... If any of you guys were on here last week when we did the the uh, meditation last week, it was pretty phenomenal, you guys. You guys did <laughs> really awesome. It was a soft energy. Um, so we are doing yeah, the fruit of life. <laughs> we'll probably use the pyramid today. Um, again, when we did the pyramid last week, so basically – Within this pyramid, it is that field of neutrality. The field of neutrality has many flavors to it. Um, you know, there's within that field of neutrality, it's it's soft. The field of neutrality is not it's not pushing, it's not overpowering, it's not you know. Um, it's not creating disparities is not saying anything is right or wrong within the field of neutrality there is no right there is no wrong it it dissolves that duality of right and wrong um, because the field of neutrality is also taking us to a higher perspective so when we go into the heart space and we look at things things look different from the heart space than from the head space because it's a different perception. It's kind of like when we are focused right in here at this little problem, we're focused, we're inside of it. It's hell, it's all around us, it's everything, it's the entire reality is this little problem. When we step back farther and we can get a different vantage point, a different perspective of what this little problem is, this little problem doesn't seem like anything, it, it vanishes, it's not a problem. That's kind of like what it is with the field of neutrality. So again, it's not like we are ignoring that this is a reality. We're changing that, that we're changing that reality. The field of neutrality is it's, it's a place to go to where is that soft energy. So last week when we did our meditation and we all went within that pyramid and we expanded and we expanded out, it was a soft energy. It was beautiful, but just because it is a soft energy does not mean it is powerful. Neutrality is one of the most powerful fields in this duality creation. It changes realities. So today, let's step in and expand. We're going to use the tools because they're holding the space, but you do not need the tools. You can do this on your own. Um, the tools are simply like a space holder, um, a way for, for us to know and recognize a field. It's, it's, a, it's an attunement. So basically, once we are attuned to something, we know what it is, we can then access it and expand. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into this meditation and we're just going to access this field and we're going to expand. It'll be a part of us and we'll be a part of it. And then after the fact, you'll be able to go through and do this on your own. Okay. Here is our nice little Ascension Pyramid prototype. Okay. So... Just close your eyes if you wish. Put your attention to your physical heart. Within your physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. 
Just imagine that your light is connected to the center of the earth, the light of the earth. If you want, you can breathe that energy right up and meet that within your heart, connecting your light to the light of the earth. Next, let's connect to that light of creation, of soul, of source, of creator, of God. Bringing in that light of creation into the heart as well. And from there, within your heart, that little zero point space, you are grounded into the earth, you are connected to creation, you are in the heart space, your consciousness is. Now take yourself and imagine yourself inside of this pyramid just sitting down right in the center, however you feel. Within there is that field of neutrality. So just take your light and expand out into that field of neutrality, into that field of universal peace, into that field of harmony. And your light that's expanding from earth and from creation is then also that field of neutrality, that field of universal peace, that field of harmony. Bring that into every cell of your being, every cell of your body, your heart is a sun. Every cell of your physical body is a sun, is a little universe, is a little galaxy. Imagine within each of those little suns is that field of neutrality, is that universal peace, is that harmony. And as your heart expands and it encompasses your entire physical body, all within those fields, now then start imagining those fields of neutrality anchoring into the core of the earth. your light in the core, the light of creation, neutrality, harmony, peace, and you and all of us are in the core of the earth. We're all there together as this giant crystal sun. And we start to expand. All together, we expand out through all of the earth itself. Everything within the earth. And if you find any sticky pockets, dark pockets, just stay in that light. Expand into it. Again, we're not forcing. We're just enveloping with this soft light. radiating through. If you need to be back in the core of that earth again, you may. And just expand from there. Or you can put your awareness on the edge of this expansion as we radiate up to the surface of the earth. We radiate up through the trees and the plants and through the bodies of water. We radiate up through the people, through the places, through the buildings, through the towns, the cities. We radiate up that light of neutrality, of universal peace, of harmony, 
through all beings. Just reminding their heart, their light of this field of neutrality, of peace, of harmony, of being grounded with the earth. And as we expand, we expand through all time, space, realities, timelines. We expand through everything that the earth is. We expand through humanity and we expand beyond. We expand through every dimensional plane. And if you need to, again, put your attention back into that core of the earth and all the energies in between, it's now just this soft, subtle, powerful, harmonious, expansive energy. All right. And we'll leave it there. Stay expanded, you guys. Go back and do this time and time again. If you take 20 minutes out of your day every day this week and you expand and you just be, just start this whole process over and just be. Again, with neutrality, we are holding the space for the changing of realities. So we're not trying to fix anything because once we're in that true space of neutrality, there's nothing to fix. Everything's perfect. Everything's divine. You guys, this is a beautiful time to be here and to witness. Don't look at the bad stuff with this. Look at your heart, know, and trust. This is huge. All right, much love.